Hello everyone. So I am delighted to be joined here today by Athena Melchizedek, who is the founder of Visionary Leaders Rising, which brings together people from around the world to share in activations, empowerments and integrations that support the global visionary business community. She's also the author of the book, The Quantum Keys. And I'm sure Athena will talk more about this in a moment, but it's an introduction to the science of energetics and explores in depth the current synthesis between science and metaphysics, which is also something I'm very interested in as well. And Athena also has a connection collaboration community. So I'm looking forward to finding out more about all of those things. But first of all, Athena, thank you for joining me here today. Oh, thank you. It's my absolute honor to be here. I'm really looking forward to it. Yeah, me too. The thing that I think uh, is really fascinating for everybody to hear is the story of the people that kind of come and join me for these interviews when they just share a little bit about their background. And that can be whatever you feel is resonates for you to share about your background but also the awakening experience as i'm now calling it but just that realization that things are not the way that we were told that they are okay well uh that's a really interesting one for me because um when i came into this incarnation i uh, i came into a family um that was uh Roman Catholic on one side and Freemason and spiritualist on the other side in terms of spiritual belief systems. Anyway, what, what evolved was that when I was seven years old, my father would um, began to speak to me um, about energy and consciousness and vibration and frequency in these terms. And I was getting all this, I, I knew what he meant at this age so i really came in with some kind of knowing um that the world of solid objects wasn't as solid as it looked even then you know um i wouldn't say i mean i mean the, the awakenings have been a series of of expansions of consciousness for me but that's where i came in um, at that point, I already knew that, um, you know, what looked solid wasn't solid. Um, and then at the age of 12, I had um, my first inner guidance, which was, you are going to have a really hard life up to the age of 60 this is going to be your training ground between the ages of 12 and 60 you will be training for what your real work is on this planet wow that was the guidance at 12 on the top of a hill um in the middle of suburban liverpool <laughs> looking over the mersey and um so I took it on board, but then I forgot all about it, as you do. Why would it, why would it be meaningful, really, at 12, you know? Um, but, but I just wanted to recount those two instances because it was so early on that I knew I was here for something and I, I never knew what. And, of course, you go into forgetting. You have to go into forgetting to do, to do some of the necessary work. Or, in my case, I had to. I had to go in and I went into big forgetting, I can tell you, to, to, to go down into the depths of the darkness. Um, and, you know, so obviously uh, that was a, a learning curve for me. So that's how, how I were my first awakenings. Um, the next piece, I guess, came in when I lost my family. As a young woman, I, I lost my mother to cancer. And, uh, and at the same time, my father had a nervous breakdown. So my mom had 
four years, you know, I watched her for four years, the life slipping out of her. In the end, she looked like E.T. It was, it was horrific. And it was at a time in my life when, when I wanted to be having fun and having joy and, you know, and it, so it, I had this grotesque cancer on the one hand um, for four years of it. And, and I didn't, I couldn't understand what the heck was going on. Um, my father couldn't cope with the loss of my mom and this person who had been my guide, you know, since the very early days, um, just abandoned me and told me he didn't want me in his life any longer. And so this brought me into a place of real, um, search and seeking for what the true meaning of life was because I was in such distress at the loss of these two people who had been very uh obviously mom and dad my my, my parents and and I, it so it tipped me into a seeking situation for the meaning and I went kind of the Buddhist route and the Hindu route into, into those philosophies for some years. And at the same time, I had been drawn into the world of commerce and business. So the two things, you know, I had the spiritual uh, side of me going on and also it, it, it seems a dichotomy really but you know I was drawn into the world of business and I became very very successful in in the business world at a very young age as a woman which was quite something um but the interesting thing is uh and hopefully by the time I've finished waffling on you people will see the, the journey has been the journey of this planet and the journey of the, um, the, 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 the masculine, patriarchal, distorted energy, which was the business world in those days and, and still is to some, to some degree these days. But that whole journey has been my personal journey of, of healing um, because in order to survive as I lost my, as I lost, lost my parents, I went into a survival mode and um, and took on that that very masculine, even though I was a woman, um, I took on the masculine distortion of power and needing to earn money and needing not just to earn but to but to earn more money and more money because I was frightened of survival, you know, that whole survival piece that's going on in the world currently. Um, and go and and is is a, a problem for many people in the way that they imagine the world to be. Um, so yeah, so this is how the business and the, and the spiritual side came together. Um, moving on from there, I uh, so I had this great success. I was constantly having experiences of, um, Shall, shall we say other dimensions, you know? And yes, I did go down into the depths of the darkness and what that can look like. Remembering now that it is all in, your, in my own mind, this is going on because of what I finally realized that everything, the entire thing is in your own mind. Everything that you experience is a projection of your own consciousness. I didn't know this at the time. This was, was, was so to me, that is the true awakening. Um, the, the other bits are, are just, you know, uh, um, becoming aware of, of, re, of a reality that isn't what it seems. And, and, you know, I, I would be downloading things. I would be reading, say, uh, reading books on ghosts and uh, I would be seeing things that, that, that my familiars didn't see. 
<laughs> so I thought, oh, I must be either I'm really special or I'm really crazy. So, you know, as you're growing up, you, 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 in my case anyway, I went, I went that way. I had the ego then of, oh, I must be, it, I must be some, something special if they're not, if, 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 if I can see these things and other people can't, you know. So I've had all, you know, I've been, um, certainly not perfect in my past and I'm certainly not perfect now but but what I have realized through the uh entire process of of uh of life and you know I'm 72 now um and I've had some incredible incredible uh pieces going on uh, that have guided me to a place of understanding, um, of more understanding than I had at the age of seven when I was introduced to energy and consciousness then. So I became successful, uh, very successful, and I had a beautiful home. I had three cars in the garage. I had um, a partner. I had a good business that was earning lots of money and my sister bought me a book called hands of light and she said you'll she said i know you'll enjoy this because you're all into this woo woo stuff aren't you and i read the book and i said you know what i'm going to do this one day i'm going to go and be with this person and study with this person and i knew as soon as i read the book and that would have been how old, it doesn't matter how old it was, but I just knew that this was a, a big sign for me. I felt it, you know, like you just feel inside that it's the right thing. It took me um, 13 more years before I could, before life put me in the situation to be able to, or rather not life put me, I, co I created the situation that would take me on that journey. So what happened was I lost my business, I lost my partner, I lost my home, everything went. I had three animals to look after and everything else had gone, which, which threw me into complete um, chaos in, in, my, in my mind. Because at, even at that point, I still so I'm 53 now, and I still didn't actually realize that I was creating it all. However, what so the journey took me into studying with the author of that book, and I studied for six years with uh, at the Barbara Brennan School for Healing, thinking that, oh, I'm going to be this great healer. Uh, you know, again, ego was there. Um, this, is, this, is, this is the road for me. This is the way forward. This is what I'm going to do. Not for one minute realizing that this was about my own healing. How arrogant can one be? But nevertheless, I was. I didn't realize any of this because I wasn't conscious fully conscious um so it took so i've i walked into the school and the the barrage of love that hit me as i walked into that school just ne ne nearly knocked me over the energy just nearly you know it was so amazing and i stood stayed there for six years to learn to truly learn all about energy and to learn um, how to work with it, how to see it, how to feel it, how to transmit it, how to all of all the, the whole energy piece. But also the, the, by far the greatest part of this work for me was the what I call the psychoenergetic, uh, psycho psychological psycho side of things the mind how the mind and the motion the emotions and everything works and uh because be, because we had to not only have uh, work with a therapist the whole time 
uh, one of their therapists, you know, one of their uh, counsellors. But we also had to practice it. It was part of the um, the syllabus to to take us onto the inner journey. And then, oh my God, then it all kicked off. You know, those through those six years, I mean, I was, it was, uh, you know, particularly in the astral realm, uh, working, we, we, we had to work with, uh, with partners and, you know, working, heal, doing healings on each other constantly. Um, so this was at the same time as doing a full-time job, I was doing this, you know, we used to go five times a year. Um, and so the energy work combined with the inner work and what that brought in was just incredible in absolutely incredible and I, and it was that it was because of that work that i actually realized at that point that that all my inner peace is what i'm seeing out there it is being reflected to me because this is the way the teachings were when you know we would be we would be working around all of this stuff and how when i shifted how i was thinking and feeling and and could could work with with the places within myself that, that where the energy was stuck everything everything out there changed it was it was a phenomenal training so that took place um and i thought at the end of of that i thought i was done again arrogance and ignorance arrogance and ignorance I thought, wow, now I can go out and now I can start practice and, you know, now, now I can go and help people and, and earn some money. <laughs> but, but the universe had different ideas. Um, I gave up at that point after I'd finished school. I also finished business. I had been running my own business and there's been there's, there's more I can tell you about the business side, but it's not I don't think it's terribly relevant to where. To where we want to go with this um suffice to say i gave up uh, uh my own consultancy which again had been very successful i've always been very successful in that business world but now my energy was changing and now i couldn't be in that world because what my my, my overall healing had been to heal the distorted masculine revive the feminine that had completely killed off in order to be the successful powerful woman in a man's world and so i killed my fe my feminine side off which which is was why all my relationships with men were completely abusive because all I was inviting in was what what was being what was the reflection of me, you know, the distorted masculine. Just, I hope this makes sense, and I hope it'll make sense to your viewers. But it's what I'm guided to share on this interview. So, so I had healed the the distorted male, and I had revived and brought into balance within myself the the feminine. Very, very important. Very, very important. Um, and these were our energies we're talking about. My sexuality has always been what it, what it is. Whatever that is, I'm not sure anymore. <laughs> uh, but you know, um, I, I was born a woman, so I'm I'm a woman. But but I'm speaking energetically here now. So that was that was kind of the those that that six year healing journey. And I did all of this while I was living in Canada. I moved from England to Canada to do this in order, because I was working in the consultancy in Canada. There, I also did some incredible work with um, with the indigenous beings on the on the North American continent. Um, 
uh, because that was all part of the astral healing for me, um, working with those different levels and going into constructs that were not just of this lifetime, but were, were, were with previous incarnations. And that was a big, huge piece whilst I was on the, the continent of, of the USA. Um, I also did some work with indigenous beings in, um, in South America, in per, um, Peru, uh, in the Amazon, a couple of Amazon uh, shamanic things. Um, and it all, it was never about what I thought it was about. I thought it was about me just going on a, on a program or on a course or on, a, or on a, um, something that I fancied to do. But actually, it was all about my own healing and, and, all, and healing all this fragmented, all these different fragments of, of, of the self. Um, so then came, uh, I, I, once I'd completed that, I came back to the UK and I, and I found, I, I, was, I was always wanting more and more information. I, I, I was always wanting the next piece. So the next piece came in. I did, I did um, uh, had never done any of the things I was supposed to do in the right order. Like I never went to university um, when I was supposed to, you know, the age is supposed to, but I actually went to university when I was 50 plus because I found something I actually wanted to study and not something that the school was telling me I needed to, to, to know because I wasn't interested in, 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 in that. You know, that's why I went into business very early on in my life. Anyway, I'm jumping back and forth a little bit here. But nevertheless, um, I then went to study for um, a master's degree in um, psychosocial and integrative health. And I looked at the syllabus and I thought, this is the next thing. This is the next thing. Wow, 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 wow. I loved it. I loved it. And it brought me into, because it was a, sci it was a science degree, um, it brought me into the research of um, all the quantum physics and all of that area that I didn't really know about before, even though intuitively I did because I was an intuitive empath and I'd been through all the healing school and everything. I just want to say that uh, the, my, the, the Brennan School was run by a woman who was a spiritual healer and also an astrophysicist so that <laughs> that perfect you know perfect attractor uh, but she never really taught us a lot about the about the physics and and all the stuff that I was really interested to find out about so this next piece of the puzzle came in and I did work for two three years on that got that under my belt and came back to England then and thought, wow. Then I, then I got the whole download for the quantum keys. And that was just incredible the way that that came about because I would get up in the morning um, and I would just be sitting in my PJs, at, you know, with a cuppa and it would start, it would just start. It was, it was crazy and I just had to, I can't even type as fast as it could, it was coming. And, and I was being guided here and guided here if I needed to check any of the science because it is about, you know, the, the not just quantum physics, it was cosmology, it was quantum physics, it was um, cell, cell biology, um, neuroscience, um, all the different branches of science that have gone into uh, bringing us a new version of science. Um, that you know at school I, I was not into any of that I it was not I don't I can't get my mind around this but anyway you know I, I got all the information I needed to to put this book together uh, and so I wrote the quantum key or rather I was guided I've, I've, I've moved away by this time from the I um, and I know, you know, my guidance, I've, I've had incredible, incredible guidance from incredible beings 
right the way through all of this, some of which have appeared to me in um, in whatever form, um, others that just I, that have just guided me with their with their presence. Um, and so the quantum keys was was the whole, I guess really the pivotal point uh, when I realized that, oh my gosh, this is just coming through me and it's not about me. And is there a me? And I was questioning that at, the, at that stage. Um, I started to create programs. I started to, based on the book, uh, I started to work with businesses because I, because I always had that business connection. And then I think this is a, I want to share this because this is real, I feel this is really important. Then I got involved with a group. Uh, again, uh, it's an attractor because it's, it's a soul uh, part of your, part of the healing journey with a group um, that was uh, run by the Melchizedek. And, um, Sorry, I don't know the Melchizedek. Melchizedek, a, a, a group of people who were part of that soul family. And I went to work with them for a year. And, I re and what I saw there was, so this is a spiritual group now and a highly spiritual, uh, highly spiritual group. They were, they were doing good work. It seemed to me good work. And I was drawn in and I thought, this is my soul family. At that point, my name was not Melchizedek. And, um, but I was so, so here is a, a big, huge piece for me around, oh, here's my family, the family that, you know, the, and the wounding of the loss of the family. Here's my family that I've lost. And I went to join them. And I realized that what I had joined very, very quickly was just um, another patriarchal distortion. And that was like, what? Wow, you mean? I, 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 that really um, was quite difficult to to understand because I was trying to understand it with the linear mind uh, and I couldn't and then I realized of course you know and I take them I changed my name I changed my passport um it's the ego again that ego there it was again so now I'd advanced from just normal linear linear ego shall we say lower self ego to now I'm more spiritual after all of that healing, after all of that work, still there it was, spiritual ego, which is even more um, dangerous, even more insidious. Uh, and you only see it when you see it. And this is why I'm, I wanna be ultra honest on, on this interview. Um, you know, and I have no condemnation or no judgment other than wanting to share this convoluted journey of the ego and the realization finally of what it's a, what the whole healing journey was about for this being. So long story short, when uh, I, I after. And thank God, you know, thank God, these are all pointers on that, you know, these are all blessings that they can all be construed as either something terrible or a, a complete blessing. Because all, for me, it was all of the pieces were, had, had um, coalesced to bring me to a state of knowing. So all that I judge is bad or terrible or all the pain and all the, it's, I've created all of it or co-created it 
with other beings to in order to fully realize that really there's only one of us at the end of it all. You know? And it's been just a, an amazing journey with all sorts of weird and wonderful things going on. Um, I, when when I left there, I came back. Oh God, I've been I've been zooming all over the world all all my life. So a little bit like you, Rabita, you know, whether you're traveling, and that's what we do, isn't it? You know, we go here, we go there, we find one piece of ourselves, another piece of ourselves, another piece here, and this is what I've done anyway. Uh, never really fitted into any of the social structures. Never did what I was supposed to do at the time I was supposed to do it with, like, with, regarding study. I didn't get married and have children. I didn't do all of that. No, nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. But in my case, I, that's not what I chose to do. Um, I chose to re. I my intention at my at my schooling was I want to reach the highest potential possible as a human being in this lifetime. That was my intention. And that's where I'm still moving to. Um, so after the quantum keys, after the Melchizedek, um, I still have the Melchizedek name and my name is Athena Melchizedek. These came through in, um, uh, shall we say, trance states. Um, one of them came through, the Athena came through in, in the, after I had done some work with ayahuasca in, in the Amazon. Um, and I have kept those names because I changed my passport and I realized I have to have a moniker of some kind. And they are both, um, the, the names are just names. We have to be called a name whilst we're in this physical dimension. But I want people to know that that's all it is. It's just a moniker. Um, or, or a, a tag, because I do not identify with with a being that is Athena Melchizedek. Everything that comes in comes through me. There is no ego. There is no I. Um, I have a name for the purposes of you know of being recognised in the physical world, and that's it. But I really feel that it's important with all of this. Start, yeah. If you want to call me a star seed, we can go. That's another label we can have. Um, yes, I have memory of being in different um, uh, uh, consciousness levels or different dimensions in different places in the universe. But please, the universe is inside me, the universe is inside you. It's all within and a projection out. And this is the key, key piece. So what happened, what is important, and this was kind of the final realization, what is important is the present moment, not the past that I've just spent ages telling you about, and not even the future, because we are constantly, every single moment, creating the future. We're creating the future, you and I, Rabito, on this now, in this moment. And um, that's my realization that every being that I see is a reflection of this being. So with that realization, I'm, I'm noticing also I'm still in a physical body. I'm here for what purpose? To, so my purpose is, and I look at the trajectory of, of this being's life, And it is only a pointer to point me in the direction of where I may be of use and of service to the supreme reality and the 
source of all life that wants to come through this being now it's cleared of all its ego crap um it's been a journey a wild journey i've had a remarkable time down in the pits of hell and in the bliss of what you might call well let, let's call it bliss heaven whatever you want to call it but nevertheless i'm here in this moment now and i'm thrilled to be alive in a physical body with all that i've learned to bring forth into this new creation i feel so blessed each moment that I'm breathing, I'm so excited. And yeah, um, just want to be, as I'm speaking it, I'm feeling that beautiful space, spaciousness and emptiness, uh, and just allowing the, the life force to come through. And that's where my journey has brought me to. And I feel blessed. I am blessed. I am blessed. I am. I also feel very blessed to meet you and to see where this will take us moving forward. Thank you for sharing that, that um, journey. And uh, yeah, I've also been on a journey that I will not go into right now, um, purely because of time, because I can see that we could chat quite easily for a very long time. Um, but I'd like to now maybe go to the book, The Quantum Keys, a little bit, because you've mentioned a few times that what is going on out there is a mirror of what's going on inside us. And um, I can imagine that there's some people watching this that certainly it was a question that I had. Mm -hmm. And the book is about how science and the metaphysics or the science and the spirituality meet or how science can explain certain aspects of um, spirituality and what people have been describing for thousands of years going through this kind of journey um, is that if the world is a reflection of you and there's how many billion people on the planet how is it possible that the world is a reflection of each individual person i got you so there's but because there's multiple there's the each person is creating their own world. And remember also that we have been, we are tapped in to, uh, our DNA template is not only contains, you know, our, our immediate ancestors, but the entire, it connects us into fields of energy from the entirety of creation. So we have an individual um, world that we're creating and a collective world that we're creating together because we've all been part of, for, from millennia, you, you get it, the, the energy, because really, pardon me, energy is only information. Um, and it's carrying uh within our dna we carry the information of the entirety of creation the god mind if you like now that's quite difficult for some people to really um take on board oh you're saying oh here she is again she's being arrogant she's god um I, it's not in in that sense i'm saying that it's um does this answer your question? I, I agree with you. I just can imagine that that might be a question that people might be asking when you kind of mention a few times, because there's the 
very popularized law of attraction. There's also non-duality, which mm-hmm. is another um, kind of very popularized um, spiritual teaching. Um, but I, I feel that, and also I'm aware of, and I hope it's the correct name. I think it's Robert Lorenza, mm-hmm. who has done some work in quantum physics on how the world out there is a manifestation of the collective um, worldview, or mm-hmm. as I interpret it, the, our collective um, outlook and perspective on 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 what's on what the world is and that comes from the memory um and that that's an, another hard one for people to get they think they only have to work on their own stuff um but that piece about being connected into uh, for the D, the dna template being connected in to the entirety of our heritage of us human beings means that we all carry a piece no matter what karma you know this this goes back into the the karma thing again um no matter what piece or pieces we do individually we still carry the collective within us because we're all one, it's all one, it's all one unity. So you cannot look out there and say, well, I've done my work, I'm fine. You know, we still need to keep this, the expansion of consciousness takes us out and out and out and out and out until we realize that we are the all of it, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, the paradise, the hell, every dimension, it's all that we are. We cannot say that i've just written i've I've written loads about this actually subsequent to the quantum keys um probably more on the spiritual side than the than the than the the science side but you know um where the quantum potential field is an infinite field and with and and its substrate is is energy so energy is popping in and out of existence in the quantum potential field all the time for infinite infinite it's an infinite field so you could equate the quantum potential field i call it the quantum potential field some people call it the zero point field this is the other problem there are so many names for the different things no wonder people get you know mixed up but nevertheless you could call the quantum potential field the mind of god that holds intelligence. Yeah. But, you know, um, and the more and more and more that you expand your consciousness and the, the, the more of that that you can take in, yes, then you can see how what is being projected onto the screen out there, because it's just a screen. It's only what we're taking in with our five physical senses. And how do we, you know, the only thing that you're sure of is I am. Present moment, I am. I don't, I don't know if that makes sense. You know, present, that's why, that's why coming back to the present all the time. In this moment, I am. That is the only thing I can be sure of. Absolutely, yeah. And, <laughs> and each I am moment is going to create the next moment. So how we are in this moment, if we want to create a paradise, and if we don't want to create paradise, there must be something wrong with us. (laughs) Then we have to be, be mindful how we do it together. This is something that I've been repeatedly saying on CPN is if we want to create a paradise or an ideal world or a better world, we have to be an example of the world that we want to have. And um, it seems extremely obvious to me 
<laughs> that if we want to have a world where people are not, you know, fighting or causing harm to others, then we need to not be fighting That's and right. we need to That's not be right. causing harm to others. Right. I agree with you completely. And, uh, you know, we don't have time for me to share my experiences. But um, the reason that I'm asking is because I, I believe that, and we talked about this before the interview, that there's an energy shift happening now mm-hmm. where we're moving from especially with the the whole COVID situation, which really, um, you know, there was a survey that I posted on the channel about half of the world's population right now. Um, I mean, it's a survey, but nevertheless, about there's a lot of people out there that are now realizing that their freedoms are being taken away, that the uh, institutions out there that they thought cared about them don't. And as I describe to you my experience of the phases of of, of a simplified journey the next stage for me was then to go how is it all connected to go down the rabbit holes as they say and then get to the stage of okay well then we're all screwed doom and gloom no chance and then the next stage after that is reclaiming our health reclaiming our power reclaiming our balance and then I would say, the, and the, they overlap a little bit, but then the, the, the final stage is, well, then how do I, how can I then be of service to others and be of service, as you said, to the mm-hmm. divine or the ultimate intelligence? Like, what, how can I now move forward? And I feel that, and, and you agreed with me, that we're now moving collectively into those later stages of okay. reclaiming our health and moving into how we can each be of service to a better reality yeah. or the ideal reality. So how, um, so perhaps, you know, what, what would you like to share with others from the quantum keys and any subsequent research and experience and findings that you've, you've come across that, that can help people that are going through this whole process, you know, so it's a bit of an open question, but maybe some of those people are now just going through that cognitive dissonance moment. Mm -hmm. Maybe others now are feeling all that doom and gloom and we've got no chance and others perhaps are now feeling, okay, I want to reclaim my power Mm -hmm. or I don't know how yet to be of service. So I know it's a very big question, but what have you learned that you could share with others that would be of help to other people? I think, um, well, I think we've we've touched on it. Um, First of all, breathe. No, it sounds. I, I'm saying that because I had a, a case on Sunday of some of someone who was in absolute total distress about the world and about something that had happened in her life, and she called me. You know, and it's my Sunday. It's my one day off, and and she was in such a terrible state. And I, and I said, look, first of all, just breathe. When you, I, I know that's that's it. it's coming back to what we were talking about before we started. It's got the simplicity of of it all. You know, I've gone down the the route of the quantum keys and all that because that's that that was my journey. But ultimately, this is all so simple to realize that we are not living in an unbenevolent universe. Everything is on our side. The air that we breathe, the waters that we that we swim in, the, the sun that, that drives the whole of life, all of nature is supporting us. The whole planet is supporting us. The whole universe is supporting us. So just breathe any time that you are um, in any kind of distress, Breathing and being aware of your breath. I am breathing in. I am breathing out. Something as simple as that takes your mind away from all of the rubbish that's going around in it. 
because it is all created by the mind and the and the reaction to the mind's thoughts which are the emotions and then the chemical reaction that happens in the body through all of that this is how all the dissonance is in in your system is created um for those who who are who are at, at slightly further along than than that one i mean that that's one piece to get out of total distress in in any moment and that's put that's a very simplistic way of doing so yes there's far much more that we can do but that is a key piece for me um th the other practices of presencing grounding and centering which i'm very uh, uh, um happy to um give you a link to rabito which are free that that i will that people can have from this interview if if that's what you wish to do um yeah, I, don't, I'll put, I don't know I'll, the mechanics of how you you no um, i can put any links in the description so, so i can I'll send put you a link to those practices that would really help anyone um they're just three short videos of of three simple practices that that bring you into a, a more centered state a, a more grounded state so important to ground and and grounding means you know being here being realizing oh yeah i am in a human body still i'm not up in sirius and i'm not up in on, on all of this crazy places everybody goes you know it's not helpful what what what's helpful about that you know what i mean i'm sorry i'm just being awful <laughs> it, grounding is so important and the presencing of of the self, the presencing of, or the allowing the presence of your your true nature to come through, it is so simple. And and if you don't, if you're worried about things, get in touch with somebody who can help you to do all of this. You know, everybody needs help. I needed help. Everyone needs some help at some point. It's not, a, and that's the other key piece in all of this. Going forward, more than anything, we need to be together. We need to be in groups of like-minded beings. We need to, and, and we're going to be attracted into those groups. This is one of those groups, anybody watching. This is, you know, this is important. It is not the lone um, wolf any longer leadership even in business all of it is changing we're moving away from the leadership of uh, you know one leader even the like the guru model no we're moving away from that now that was the the, the age of pisces if you if you want to get into all of that stuff we're moving into a new age of aquarius which is about the group and the power of the group and synarchical leadership Synarchy meaning shared leadership. We, we, you know, the onus isn't just on one person that everybody else follows. That's not that's not what freedom and sovereignty is about. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. I was just trying to. Un <laughs> I was just trying to unmute myself. <laughs> um, so that that leads in perfectly to uh, the the work that you're doing with the visionary leaders rising, and so what uh, you I think it's a, is it a well maybe just explain what visionary leaders you rising know, it's very is. Very simple. It's um it it's really just an extension of the work I was doing as a group mentor. I've been doing what we call group mentoring for ages, and I still do mentoring for individuals as well. Please don't run away. You know, I don't want anybody to run away from me because they think I'm just involved in groups. But um, yeah, it was just the visionary leaders dropped in in 2020 at the beginning of um, of the uh, COVID rubbish. Um, and it stayed there it, and I've only really just ignited it um, because I had to, I had, you know, I was back and forwards to Canada in, in, during the uh, pandemic. Yes, people, 72 years old, one of the most supposed 
um, you know, uh, at risk, high risk people. Yeah, I'm still here. Can you see me? Can you hear me? Yes, I'm still here, alive and well. I, I went through back and forth to Canada twice during the whole shamozzle. Uh, I just got out of Canada before Trudeau slapped on his um, his, his ban on flying. <laughs> and uh, I got out in time. Uh, and just, you know, I'm in the UK for the moment. Anyway, um, so Visionary Leaders Rising is for anyone who is in any way, shape or form, wanting to create, to collaborate, to connect, to be in group, to pool our energy. Um, a very important thing with regard to the to more science piece of it is the more of us that can come together at a high frequency level, the more we can pull in the those people who are not quite at you know at that frequency because energy works through resonance and if we are holding firm a very high frequency then we bring we, we can bring more and more of the masses along with us and we can see it happening people are, are waking every minute it's beautiful to watch but I'm guided that the more and more of us that can come together en masse, and I feel this is what you are doing um, with your work, Rubito, and, and the other groups I'm working with now, I'm noticing I'm moving. To, so I work with individuals. I work with, with small groups. I'm now working with movements of people um, who, uh, because we're all on, uh, getting the same message. We need to do this together. If we want to really, really make a difference to our external uh, uh, experience of this world, we need to come together. And to come together not in, um, not in competition with one another, but in collaboration with one another, in support of one another, in unconditional love, for one another and for, for what each is bringing to the party because each has their own unique significance. Remember that the divine is coming through each individual at that beautiful, uh, you're a facet of a diamond. It's so beautiful. Allow it to happen. Don't get bogged down with all the old structures and ways of doing things because they didn't fucking work excuse me sorry you might have to cut that out um, <laughs> they didn't work did they you know and this must be obvious to the entire world this is why they have to keep faking the news <laughs> and faking this and faking that for god's sake wake up and that's all i can say really yeah uh, one positive that i take from you were just mentioning the news and the you know that, that people wake up and all of this is the these these people you know that are at the, the top behind the scenes of this archaic pyramid structure that have infinite resources and infinite money because if you you know follow it to the top they're actually printing the money um the amount of resources that they've required and the amount of that they've re required, not acquired, and that they use, you know, the media and uh, infiltrating education and, and all of these different things, the, the amount that they have to, that they need to do in order to keep us feeling that we are not able to be visionary leaders mm -hmm. um, actually shows the power that we have as humanity and it's still not working because Absolutely. people are on mass waking up anyway. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so I see that as very much a positive. I do too. Um, it, yeah, I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you. Uh, the amount of 
energy that they've had to put into it's a good way to 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 view it to view it i never thought of it like that but you're right um and we're here um you know this is what we came for this is why we're here this is why we're still in physical form because the the creator of all life wishes to keep creating through us and creating beautiful sublime creations not the some of the things that we've been seeing you know so it's it's so um isn't it just amazing i am so blessed i feel so blessed because i'm so old in a way i know you you youngsters are you know you're you've got time ahead of you and i feel really blessed to still be here and kicking and knowing that i can still contribute um and still you know this is why i'm i'm so passionate about the group thing and and i've seen the power of the sm- even just the small group how it can change people like that with the support and love that of others so please join us fantastic yeah maybe i'll just add because you you touched on these points before that um you know we all need support you know and i do for example i do the hypnotherapy and part of that is releasing stress internal stress or really freeing the energy and you know everybody needs to de-stress and they can do it in different ways they can find their way that works for them um but this idea that uh as you were saying about the the antiquated again kind of hierarchic hierarchical structure of spirituality as well with the guru and things like this um that we, we in my ideal world we would all be sharing each sharing our modalities with each other and everybody would be you know and this person would be sharing their reiki and this person would be sharing the hypnosis and this person would be sharing their modality and we'd be doing it together because sometimes i hear people say and i was a little bit like this at one point as well you know i don't need some i hear people say i don't need therapy and okay yeah therapy has a connotations to it that there's something wrong with you and i can understand but um we all need support from each other mm-hmm. and then the other thing you were talking about is is working with each other and um you know collaborating with each other rather than competing with each other mm-hmm. it should also be uh, as as ideally um from an egoless space yeah. where we're all sharing with each other for the for the better for the greater good for for whatever we want to call it um and i and i feel like this is not happening in all areas of the truth movement the freedom movement and 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 uh, um you know and of of, of what's happening right now but it's increasing and it's increasing and it's snowballing as i like to call it and it's unstoppable yeah i think you're right and um i get that's really because you know every the, there are many different levels of of awareness of consciousness even in the, even in the higher pardon me excuse me um even in the higher what you might call the higher frequencies so we just have to honor that um not judge um i think you know we do we are in a duality um or a polarity as soon as we're in the physical realm it's a polarity there's a there's an object um and a and it's only in in meditation that we can step back from that um so it behoves those of us who are able to work in that very what i would call a very high uh high consciousness way to do so and not worry about anything else i don't this is this comes back to well we can we can do we judge something or do we just make headway in the new and create the new and be the new and 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 create that energetic pathway in the whole scheme of the of the entirety of the universe you know and in particular our planet let us create that pathway that says we can do this without competition and let us not worry about 
where the abundance is coming from because it is coming because this is how we can you know i'm working with one group for example who helps me with my website and um so i don't take a fee for my work with them but 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 they help me with my website and they help me with with that kind of thing all the techie stuff that i'm absolutely rubbish with you know there's there's a way forward for us all um and the and that happened because i asked for it i said please i need some help here i'm game for i'm game for what i'm here to do but i need a bit of help bring it in. and it comes in you know it just comes in it just drops in effortlessly yeah, that opens up a whole other topic that we can't get into now because of time. But, um, <laughs> you know, energy, money. Can I, really uh, to do that one with you? I'm an expert in it. <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, I found that the best way for me to do the hypnotherapy is on a, a, a sliding pay scale. So you pay what you can. And then if somebody can't afford even the the lowest price um, and they genuinely can't afford it, then I'll do it for whatever that, um, that they can afford on donation. But there's a whole big topic about, you know, do we even need money? Is it possible to live in a society without money? What, what I'm seeing, um, because I can assure you, because I was, you know, in the business side of things and, and obviously interested in how I'm going to survive through if I have to be in physical form, <laughs> um, without charging the earth to to people for who need who desperately need help, and um, so I, I took a look at the crypto space, and and I was guided that the um, what is happening in the rest of the world is also happening in that space. All the bad actors are being washed out, mm -hmm. and and that needs to happen. So so be with it. You know, when I say bad actors, it's horrible. It's a horrible expression, but that, that's one of the expressions they use. Um, but yeah, you know, all of these people that are not life affirming, all of the structures, whether they're in the, the financial world or the medical world or, or the political world, whatever, they're all going to be washed out. And yeah. we will be left with something that we can. That's because not all of it was gross. Not every single piece of the creation was gross, but they're just those those corrupted parts. It's like any healing. It's like healing on a, on a body, you know. I so agree. I no, I totally agree. And it's embracing it all and just going, as you said, you know, just yeah. just going. Well, I, I often say, you know, going with the flow. Yeah. Like you're going down a river. You have those obstacles. You just go around them yeah. and just keep going forward. And for me, we talked about this before, following the intuition yeah. that will guide you and keep you safe. Absolutely. I was just going to say the very simple, obviously we're very in sync. <laughs> I was just going to say the guidance and the trust, to, to having the trust to follow that guidance. That's been, that's one of the things I should have mentioned when I was talking about my convoluted journey. But the guidance would come through and it sounded, in some instances, absolutely crazy. You know, oh, shut up shop and don't do this and go here and go there. And it, but I followed it and it, and it was a journey that brought me back home, back home, which is here within. Beautiful. Um, before we finish, could you just share with, I will put the links in the description, but could you share with the viewers uh, how they can find you, your website and anything else you'd like to share? God, I haven't got them in front of me, Rabita. Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> uh, well, what I can see in front of me is uh, that it's all on the, um, so it's a m e l c h i z e d e k dot love. love. That's the website. I've got it now. And then and the, the other link was a melchizedek dot love forward slash visionary leaders rising. And the other one is forward slash the quantum keys book. Yeah. 
but that's hyphenated so yeah. the hyphen quantum hyphen keys hyphen book. Book. and they're all but by going to the main website the links are there at the top and yeah, they'll also they be in the description as well they'll get onto it from the main from there thank you for speaking with me it was a pleasure um i really as i said before look forward to just seeing how this will unfold moving forward bless you it's been an absolute joy to be with you um thank you for inviting me to this platform thank you to all your viewers for being fabulous beings and um i look forward also to a forward collaboration and wishing you absolute blessings on your forward journey thank you Thank you.